Hi everyone, welcome back for the second video in our statistical modeling short course series. As promised, this video will be an overview of linear free energy relationships, which are foundational to our group's statistical modeling methods. Most of the topics we'll cover in this section should be familiar to those of you who have taken a course covering physical organic chemistry methods. In this video, I'll remind you about what linear free energy relationships are and why they're useful to physical organic chemists. And we'll do this by revisiting Hammett's groundbreaking work on linear free energy relationships, which underpin the theoretical framework for our modern statistical modeling workflow. <clears throat> so what are linear free energy relationships? As a general principle, linear free energy relationships can be constructed if one holds all of the independent variables in a system constant except for one, and correlates that change in the variable or the parameter to a measured output. And obviously as chemists, we're interested in chemical outputs, and as the name implies, linear free energy relationship outputs should be energetic. You can probably think of at least two energetic outputs that chemists are interested in modeling or in measuring, uh, and we'll come back around to that later. Uh, as another general note on linear free energy relationships, it's important to remember that we can only make meaningful linear free energy relationships if changing the parameter or independent variable of interest is accompanied by a proportional change in the energetic output that's being measured. <clears throat> and physical organ organic chemists use linear free energy relationships to quantitatively relate structure to function and reactivity. And this is done by comparing thermodynamic outputs for a series of related reactions. And the first studies in this area were focused on substituent effects. And these studies asked the question, how do reaction energetics like KEQ vary with the inductive effects of different substituents? And Hammett was the first person to publish on this topic in the late 1930s, when he related the pKa's of substituted benzoic acids to a quantitative molecular descriptor. Hammett intuitively derived an expression to relate this molecular descriptor to thermodynamic observables, in this case, the measured acid base constants for benzoic acids. Hammett called this molecular descriptor sigma para, and sigma para quantitatively describes the inductive effects of substitution on the acidity equilibrium constant for para-substituted benzoic acids. So as we know, electron withdrawing groups shift this equilibrium to the right, therefore increasing the value of KEQ, because the withdrawing groups stabilize the anion that is formed over the course of this reaction by induction. A nitro group is strongly electron withdrawing and has a sigma para value near positive one. And so Hammett measured all of these different acidity constants and related the pKa's of the para-substituted benzoic acids to sigma para using a line of the form y equals mx plus b, where our dependent variable of interest is the log of the ratio of equilibrium constants and sigma is our dependent variable. Hammett termed the slope of this line rho, and in the case of the ionization of benzoic acids, rho is equal to one. And it turns out that rho is actually a sensitivity factor. The magnitude of rho describes how sensitive a reaction is to different substituent effects. This is illustrated in the acid-base equilibrium constants observed for para-substituted phenyl acetic acids. When a carbon is added between the aryl ring and the reactive moiety, inductive effects are less pronounced, as indicated by the reduced value of rho when we correlate it. This makes sense because we know that inductive effects are spatially dependent. An electron withdrawing group that's farther removed from the reactive moiety is less effective at stabilizing the carboxylate. It's interesting to note that when one more carbon is added, so when we're talking about the ionization of phenylpropanoic acids, the rho value is 0.21, so this isn't necessarily a linear response. <clears throat> And I actually just demonstrated another really important point 
which is that Hamnet style linear free energy relationships can be used to interrogate reactions other than the ionization of parasubstituted benzoic acids. And in fact, this, react, this type of analysis can be used for reactions that are a lot more interesting than simple acid-base chemistry. <clears throat> One example is the benzoylation of substituted aniline derivatives. The mechanism of this CN bond forming reaction seemingly has very little in common with the ionization of benzoic acids, but Hammond analysis is still useful uh, on this system to understand the reaction mechanism. Particularly, this analysis demonstrates that the sign of rho describes the charge, char the charge character of the transition state of a reaction. In previous examples, rho has been positive since electron withdrawing groups, which have positive sigma values, stabilize the anionic carboxylate. If electron withdrawing groups, in fact, slow a reaction as they do in this case, rho will be negative. The negative rho value is interpreted mechanistically as an increase in positive charge character over the course of a reaction. Here, it's understood that cationic character develops on the nucleophilic nitrogen as the substituted aniline attacks benzoyl chloride. If you've been paying really close attention, you'll notice that I just made a subtle but really important transition from talking about thermodynamic outputs, so comparing different KEQs, to talking about different reaction rates, so kinetic properties. And this is done despite the fact that the, value of sigma, the values of sigma para were originally calculated using thermodynamic outputs. But comparing reaction rates is actually really powerful to physical organic chemists, because when we use kinetic outputs, we learn about the rate determining step of a reaction. In this example, we know that the rate determining step of the reaction results in the accumulation of cationic character from the negative rho value. In this system, it means that the nucleophilic attack by the aniline derivative has to be rate determining. So you can see that this type of analysis actually teaches us a lot about reaction mechanism. And because this technique is so useful, a number of other reference reactions and additional parameters have been devised to broaden the scope of reactions that could be mechanistically interrogated using Hammett style linear free energy relationships. For example, Brown and Okamoto introduced resonance effects parameters. They named these parameters sigma minus and sigma plus. Sigma minus values were calculated based on the observed acid-base equilibria of substituted phenols, while sigma plus was calculated from the, the observed Savalasis rates of substituted isopropyl benzene derivatives, which proceed through a tertiary benzylic cation intermediate. The charges that develop over the course of these reactions interact with the delocalized electrons in the aryl pi cloud, and therefore the associated parameters measure resonance effects. <clears throat> in addition to this work, in the decades that followed Hem Hammett's sem seminal studies on linear free energy relationships, many other Many others devised parameters for reference reactions so that field, resonance, inductive, polarizability, and steric effects of substitution on reactions could be interrogated. For example, in the 1950s, Taft introduced his measure of steric effects by defining ES, the steric, steric substituent con constant, which was calculated from the rates of the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of differentially substituted methyl esters. Later, additional steric parameters were calculated, including Charton, including Charton steric descriptors from the late 1970s, which were actually calculated based on van der Waal radii rather than empirical observations. <clears throat> the growing arsenal of molecular descriptors and reference reactions has allowed countless physical organic chemists to use linear free energy re relationship techniques to elucidate reaction mechanism. And while this analysis to this day remains one of the premier tools that chemists have when studying reaction mechanisms, there are certainly limitations to traditional linear free energy relationship tools. One limitation is that most parameters were experimentally determined, which means that someone actually had to measure all of those rates or equilibrium constants, which can be an arduous process. 
And also some of the substituent parameter values actually can't be determined because of their incompatibility with the reference reactions. Another issue is that while some parameters have very clear physical meaning, like chart and stair parameters based on atomic radii, others are less easily interpreted in a physical sense. But the two limitations that ultimately led to the Sigmund Group's modern statistical modeling strategy is that only one substituent effect could be probed at a time, and that these linear free energy relationships didn't necessarily predict substituents that would make reactions work better. And so about a decade ago, people in the group began pondering how linear free energy relationships might be constructed so that more than one substituent could be tested at once. And more importantly, if these linear free energy relationships could be mechanistically insightful and useful for reaction development. And the group is still really interested in these questions, but our models in the molecular descriptors we, have, we use have become a lot more sophisticated. In our next video, we'll talk about how linear free energy relationship methods and parameters have evolved in the Sigmund group so that we can construct mechanistically insightful and predictive models.